Hey, we're going to talk today about the uh, good time banjo. And sometimes uh, when folks are shopping for a banjo, they're not quite sure what's important, what they should look for. I'd like to talk about some of the qualities of the good time banjo that make it um, a great banjo from a standpoint of the sound, why it sounds the way it does, uh, the, the way it plays, and uh, we'd like to talk about all of those things. So let's get right to it. Every good time banjo is made with a three-ply violin maple rim. This is very important because the rim of the banjo is the heart of the tone, the, the basis of the sound quality. The Good Time is the only banjo in its price range, and one of the few banjos made anywhere in the world that has a rim that is made of violin grade maple. And all of the best banjos in the world are renowned for having three-ply rims. But those are banjos usually that we associate that cost $5,000. So to do this for anything less is a great accomplishment. One of the other important aspects of any stringed instrument or fretted stringed instrument is the shape, the comfortable feel of the neck and what the neck is made of. The Good Time Banjo has a neck made of the Eastern Sugar Maple, otherwise known as Hard Rock Maple. And that stiffness of the maple gives the banjo, helps contribute to giving the banjo a bright, sparkling sound. But the, a lot of the tone of any instrument comes from the player, you know, comes from the, the hands of the player and the mind of the player. So if the neck doesn't have a nice, slender, well-shaped uh, quality to it, it's very difficult to play. So you end up straining, so you end up not as relaxed. And if you're not as relaxed, you can't generate the right tone, you can't create the right tone. The Good Time Banjo is famous for having a very slender, not too big, but not too paper thin kind of neck, and it enables the player to reach chords very comfortably, no matter where you are on the fingerboard. I'd like to draw your attention now to the inlays on the fingerboard. Um, these inlays are made of a variety of hardwoods. These are position markers to help you know where you want to put your fingers to play a chord uh, to fret a certain note. And these position markers, though they are just beautifully crafted, they are actual hardwood inlays. They're not painted on, and um, although they look so clean and tight, they look almost painted, but these are hardwood inlays. In order to keep your banjo in tune and to be able to keep your banjo in excellent tune, we use some very good quality sealed gear housing guitar style tuners. And these are very, very solidly made tuners. They turn very smoothly, very effortlessly. We also use a geared tuning machine for the fifth string as well. And the fifth string is also very, very important because that's a very high note. And if your pitch isn't just right, to be kind of annoying. So that's why we always use, always have used a geared fifth peg and good geared tuning machines on the Good Time Banjo. Another feature that's very important is we use a single coordinator rod that runs through the body of the banjo. Now this rod serves several functions. One, it adds a certain amount of stability to the rim to keep the rim from getting egg shaped by being squeezed or pulled apart by the tension of the strings but it also allows you a little bit of adjustment to change the neck angle just slightly. Say you're a person that plays with a pretty aggressive attack. In other words, you play hard and you play loud. Well, you might have a problem if the strings are too close to the frets. It will cause fret buzzing. So by adjusting that rod, you can tilt the neck angle. I'm exaggerating this, of course. But you can tilt the neck angle this way just a little bit to raise the strings away from the neck. But if you're a person that plays fairly soft, fairly quiet, and you don't need a lot of string clearance to stay away from the frets, you can adjust your neck angle ever so slightly back this way, just a little bit. Again, exaggerating this for the sake of the demonstration. That gives you excellent control over the adjustability or the playability of the banjo. It's also important that this rod is made of a very quiet metal. What I mean by that is um, 
in, in historically these rods were made of brass. Brass is a very musical sounding metal. But the trick here is to use something other than brass because what you want to hear in your good time banjo is the vibration of this rim, a little bit of the neck, and the bridge. You don't want this singing along with you because when it's not tuned to what you're doing, it sounds pretty bad. So we make this as quiet as possible with a very quiet alloy. Another interesting feature of the good time banjo is the tailpiece. Now the tailpiece is important because it not only attaches the strings to the rest of the banjo, but the tailpiece needs two other functions. One, you need to be able to adjust it a little bit up or a little bit down to increase the pressure of the strings on the bridge or decrease the pressure of the strings on the bridge. But you also, just like the other parts of the banjo, this must be made of a metal that is very quiet. You want to use a metal that does not vibrate and constantly be intruding its vibrating character into the sound of your banjo. So we use a very quiet metal. The adjustability of the good time tailpiece is very important and the way this one is adjusted is with a slot that is cut into the tailpiece material itself. This nut can be loosened and the tailpiece can be raised or lowered. When it is raised or lowered it changes the pressure, downward pressure, of the strings on the bridge. When it's adjusted so that it's adjusted down, the banjo is a little sharper, a little snappier. When it's adjusted to the tailpieces up, it's a little mellower, a little sweeter. All of the top banjos in the world are known to use a bridge that's made of maple and ebony. Some lower cost banjos have bridges made of one piece of wood, a solid piece of wood. And that's okay. But the best banjos always use maple and ebony, just like the Good Time Bridge. This bridge is 5 eighths of an inch tall and is a standard size used all over the banjo industry. The other feature of a Good Time that's very handy is that it uses a very standard sized drum head and it's an 11 inch diameter with a top frosted coating. Very common. The Good Time Banjo incorporates several very, very important features, both for adjustability and strength. This is called the tension hoop on a banjo. This is made on the Good Time Banjo from a steel alloy that's, again, very quiet, not a noisy, not a sound producing part. The J hooks or brackets on the Good Time Banjo are made of extremely strong steel. And if you notice, they are round until they get to the very top, in which case they flatten out and it gives it a wider handprint or a wider grip to hold and pull on the tension hoop. These are the bracket shoes. They're made from a zinc alloy so that they're very quiet and they don't have a sound of their own, but they're massively strong in order to keep the brackets pulling the head tightly to give the banjo head its proper tension. Well, the Good Time Banjo, as we've shown you here today, has a lot of wonderful features. But you know, ultimately, it really boils down to this. You know, this is what it's all about.